Welcome to your monthly investor check-in. This month we have James and Pacom who are going to give you an update on the markets. This has been a very eventful month. Can you give us a sense of the scale of what's happened? Sure. What we have experienced this month in terms of pandemic and the market volatility has been almost without precedent. In, in, in the market, we've experienced the fastest bear market in history and a bear market being minus 20% from the peak. To bring this into context, it took 21 days between the market peak in February and where we are now to lose 20% on the S&P 500. The second fastest one in history was as far back as 1929, with 42 days and in 2007, 2008 period, it took 234 days, 274 days for this bear market. So the speed and magnitude of those losses never happened in the past. If we look broadly, most asset classes has been, sever has been severely impacted and, and seen increased level of volatility. However, there were some safe havens, bonds in particular, and the US dollar, which helped as well in, our, in, in the market and, and in our portfolio. Interestingly, gold, which is often seen by investors as a relatively safe haven, lost money during the period as it, as it was sold by investors in search of liquidity. So all in all, what was basically a period of global growth and uh, positive corporate earnings and a positive for risky asset has been severely disrupted by the virus and investors are trying to see how to price those assets in the context of this virus and global shutdown among Western economies in Europe and in the US. How long do you think this market volatility will last? Well, the answer is it's, it's really difficult actually to gauge how long periods of market volatility last. And sometimes we have uh, periods of volatility that are really short and sharp in markets. And other times we experience periods that are more protractive, protracted and that last for weeks or for months. Um, it's a little bit like if you if you take a flight and you experience turbulence, um, you know, it's, it's part of the journey, but sometimes you experience uh, much more severe turbulence uh, that lasts for a longer period. Um, and oftentimes you can fly without experiencing any turbulence uh, at all. Um, you know, when it comes to the current uh, bout of market volatility, um, it's happened to come in sort of waves, if you like. So as coronavirus has spread outside of uh, Asia and into uh, more Western economies, we've seen uh, sort of waves of volatility infiltrate markets, um, periods of relative calm, and then periods of quite severe moves in markets. Um, I think when we think about volatility and, and what happens from here, um, you know, really it's a case of the unknown. And, and the quicker that, in, uh, that economies uh, can see the light at the end of the tunnel, the quicker that countries can start to contain and control some of the fallouts uh, from the virus in terms of the medical aspects of, of what's happening, uh, the sooner that businesses will have some certainty around the operating environment and the sooner that investors will become comfortable with what the new reality looks like. Um, volatility, to some extent, is an expression of fear and unknown in markets. It's an expression of, uh, of relative panic. And, and, and that will tend to uh, settle down and, and come to fruition as investors begin to understand what, what the new normal looks like, if you, if you like, um, and what the economy, uh, the economic backdrop will look like in Western markets uh, in the months to come for the rest of 2020. Is there any good news for investors? Yes, yeah, sure, because what I've described earlier is really the negative side of the picture, and there is clearly some positive news and information. First, the action of central banks and governments, while they can be a bit useless in the short term to fight the virus, will have an enormous impact on the market and the economy when the health issue is going to be contained. The, Fe the Fed and the Bank of England have reduced rates quite aggressively, and the Fed has pledged as well a flow of liquidity along with the European, the European Central Banks and the BOG. So while governments have provided so far relatively muted fiscal policy response, we start to see with Germany, China last month, and France, the start of a fiscal response. We are still waiting for the US to provide a strong stimulus, but we are confident it's going to come pretty rapidly. So what we, are really, what we are seeing as well is the market forcing the end of central banks and governments to act quickly. While in the short term it is very painful and the market is unfortunately, is unfortunately totally focused on the impact of the virus, soon the virus will be contained and the, and the economic impact of those strong measures will help a recovery in the economy and a positive reprice of risky assets. In light of the situation, is now a good time for me as an investor to think about changing my risk level? 
Um, well, that's a, a good question, and it's one we get uh, a lot actually when markets are volatile. And, and the simple answer is no, you, you shouldn't, um, unless, of course, your time frame or your investment goals have changed. Um, so for our fully managed portfolios and our socially responsible portfolios, our investment team uh, always reflect a, a current economic, uh, macroeconomic and markets view into those portfolios. So uh, we've already reduced risk uh, in our fully managed portfolios and socially responsible portfolios. We currently have less risky assets in those portfolios than we would typically do over the, the long term. Um, so in, in effect, that lower risk uh, approach has already been reflected in, in those portfolios. Uh, when it comes to our fixed allocation portfolios, those portfolios are built with a, a long-term uh, strategic uh, bias, and, and those portfolios will manage risk through, uh, through automatically rebalancing at, at periods when there's significant market volatility. So the key is to really not allow your emotions to uh, allow you to de-risk your portfolio, um, to remain disciplined and, and to remain focused on your, your long-term investment goals. That can be really difficult when, when markets are volatile, but it's also important to to bear in mind that actually when, when we see this type of volatility, the cost of transacting in portfolios also goes up. So uh, this is about making sure that not only are you invested for the long term, that you're uh, invested and able to, to, to be invested for the market rebound, uh, but also that you're not uh, experiencing undue cost in the portfolio by making changes and, and trying to time the market, which we know is exceptionally difficult.